So hello everyone and today I've come up with a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time so I can link to people when they ask me which one I think is quicker a potentiometer based pedal or a load cell based pedal so yeah let's get into it so first of all um, I want to point out uh, the pedals that use potentiometers and the pedals that use load cells so entry level pedals or cheaper pedals are generally going to use potentiometers or uh, how effect sensors which for this purpose uh, for the purpose of this video I'm going to treat as the same uh, although keep in mind the how effect sensors are slightly more reliable than a potentiometer so the other thing is load cell pedals which are generally found on higher end pedals and more expensive products such as Fanatec and Heisingfeld and some of them use then only on the brake pedal and some of them use then on all three pedals so yeah the, there is that and hydraulic pedals if you ask me I think for um, force measuring purposes they can be compared to a load cell pedal I don't think there is a huge difference between a load cell pedal and a hydraulic pedal if there is any difference at all if anything I think that hydraulic pedals are going to be um, harder to uh, maintain and keep working they're gonna require more maintenance procedures so yeah those this is the pedals overview so to get to the point I think I need to explain how both pedals work in uh, mechanic and electronic uh, point of view so potentiometers what do they do like you input your voltage here so you have a resistance which is the red which is going to change depending on the point you put a needle uh, which is going to change with your pedal travel so effectively if you have more travel you have more resistance so you're going to have a smaller voltage and that's how your computer knows if you are going full throttle or no throttle or full brakes or no brakes and you get the point so here is an example of potentiometer um, you see it's really small this is a ruler for scale and so it is a travel based measurement um, a strain gauge or load cell which is a strain gauge arrangement it will measure the tension which on one side and the compression and the compression uh, on the other side so effectively it is a very uh, micro built potentiometer but because it measures the material deformation so what's the material deformation like when you push your school rubber into the table you see it gets smaller and then when you release the force it gets it to its normal size again so this happens to a scale on every single material on the universe so you use that micro deformation to measure how much force you are applying to the object so it's not like magic it's not like taking the force out of magic it's basically measuring measuring travel again in a really mi small scale so that's uh, what's called deformation in engineering terms so here are some arrangements so you see like you apply the force here you're gonna compress uh, these this sides a little and extend this side a little and that's what this sensor will measure and give you back in units your computer can read so here are some types like you have some disks you have some shear beam s beam so yeah there are plenty of types of load cells that you can choose from so it is effectively a deformation based measurement here are some more types of load cells if you really want to look at them up on Google um, and you, I'm sure you can find even more but those are the most common uh, benefits so with the the way they work in mind what are the benefits applied to potentiometers for sim racing equipment first potentiometers are really cheap if they are angular potentiometers which is the one I've shown you before uh, they can be extremely cheap like this is insane how much cheap they are so that's how, why they are used on less costly uh, more accessible pedals uh, they can be abused more um, because you're gonna have to have a hard stop because you can see the potentiometer is not gonna hold your foot from breaking it so it needs to have another kind of stop mechanical stop to it so, and that mechanical stop is usually gonna withstand a lot of force so you're not likely to blow up your potentiometer if you mash up your brakes really really hard 
They are small, as you saw. It's a direct analog measurement. As you see, it's quite simple the way it measures. It's not really complicated. You don't have to glue it into any surface, so really simple. It's really good at measuring linear force increase. Why? That's because of physics. Uh, because when you, you have a linear uh, spring, which is a throttle, effectively, um, if you have 10% of throttle, you're basically compressing the spring that's going to push your throttle back. So if you want to jump from 10% to 100% of throttle, your spring is linear. So that means you're going to have to put 10 times more travel into your spring and 10 times, not 10 times more, more travel, but 10 times more force into your spring. So, yeah, uh, that's really, really easy to measure with the potentiometer because it measures the, the, the display, the amount it's uh, deformed. So if it went 10 centimeters more, it's going to have 10 times more the force. So pretty easy to make the correlation. But brake pedals don't work like that. Brake pedals, uh, they build up hydraulic pressure in the system. So it gets stopped. So think about when you have a small uh, side ring, like you are compressing water with your finger. So it's going to be compressed and then you can apply more force, but that water is not moving because it's, because it's not getting compressed but the force is increasing, the pressure in the system is increasing. So if you have a really micro measurement, a really, really small measurement, like a load cell does, of the force being applied, uh, it requires really small travel, uh, you are going to have um, a more realistic measurement, uh, way of measurement of your force. So travel won't be a limiting factor when measuring, which is really good for brakes. Uh, it can be pretty much any size you want, although I'm going to talk about price later because that's a con. Uh, you have plenty of options to choose from, as I showed. It can measure any kind of force increase. If it's linear, it's okay. If it's not linear, then with the travel, it's fine. It doesn't matter. And it's not affected by dust, which a potentiometer is. Uh, so it's in ways more reliable. Uh, you are gonna need a lot of travel for high resolutions in potentiometers because it's basically, it basically divides the whole travel range in small steps. So if you need to measure a big travel range, which a throttle pedal is and a clutch pedal is as well, um, so, no, no, actually, I mean, like, it is a really small travel for the amount of travel the potentiometer makes. So, it's basically 180 degrees. So, that's, like, going from, like, you're looking forward, and then you're going to start looking backwards. So, you know that you don't move your throttle pedal that much. So, that's not ideal to give a, a high resolution. And it only gets worse the smaller the travel is. Uh, it's uh, bad at measuring anything not linear because it requires uh, electronic compensation and that can be hard to do. And uh, again, if you are going to get to really small travels such as a brake pedal, you're not going to have anything to measure on. So it's going to have a very, very small resolution uh, to measure, which is not good for your brake pedal. It will wear out over time because it is a needle generating friction against the surface. And linear travel pots are very, very expensive. I said angular pots are really, are really cheap, but linear, which is going to be more precise and, uh, let's say, it's going to work better with smaller travel. It's going to be more expensive, and they are way more reliable than those angular pots. They're not going to be subject to dust because they have better isolation. But again, you you can get potentiometer uh, load cell like results on a potentiometer but it gets really really expensive and it is very sensitive to dust especially those angular potentiometers which don't have very good dust isolation so going on to load cells they can be more expensive out of the box although i already said like you can go as expensive as you want with anything in in the, on earth and um with the way it's currently applied, load cells are more expensive than potentiometers. There is no way to limit excessive load because the load is going straight into the sensor. So if you mesh your brake pedal really hard and don't have a uh, very compliant load cell, which has a very high load rating, it's not going to work really well. And if you 
if you go really like I'm gonna buy a load cell that is meant up to measure a car so there is no way I'm gonna blow it up so then you are gonna lose resolution again so it's all about a trade-off so yeah I think like to have the best resolution possible there is no way to limit if you are to make a, a very very a strong application of the brake pedal on like the normal brake pedal loads of the sim racing pedal now pedals nowadays if we don't want to break like a formula one driver with 180 kilos of force on the brake pedal so if you want a small one which is gonna make your mounting solution simpler it will cost you a lot and if you go big it <laughs> requires a much stronger mounting point but it will require cheaper load cell so it's either you buy a more expensive sensor or spend more in engineering hours and uh, it needs analog or digital conversion because it works at micro voltages because they the sensors are really small so they would melt at normal voltage and it is subject to damping and hysteresis and what is that it is the basically the effect you're going to feel with that is uh, the force that you apply on the brakes is going to take more time to be read by the computer than with a potentiometer because the way you you put the force as it's not measuring travel uh the brake pedal travel it's measuring the force you're gonna take more time to build up the force and when you reach maximum force and keep let's say the same pressure your whole uh bushings and plastic and rubber that you put to simulate the brake pedal uh, properly they are gonna seat and deform a little bit more and that's gonna decrease the force that is applied on the load cell so that's not uh, ideal to keep the same. But again, you likely won't notice that on your synth setup unless you were really, really uh, wanting to look at data in a scientific way. But it is something and that affects a little bit ABS braking, which I'm going to show next. So here's a comparison with braking. Like those lap times, they were less than a tenth within each other with the load cell or the potentiometer. Although the big differences that I want to point out is that without ABS, you can see like the release of the brake comes in steps when it's not the potentiometer. So here you see, and here again, like it comes in steps and that's not really good for car balance. Uh, you want to have a more linear way, which is happening with the load cell. So that's more, uh, that's a better driving technique with the load cell. Um, and again, uh, this is my data, by the way, uh, comparing and same car, similar setup, but yeah, didn't make a difference in lap time. So I think it was good to compare. And again, you see like the pressure build up with the load cell is, it takes a lot more time again. And with ABS, you can see that as well. So, but with ABS, that can be a bad thing. Here is the M2 cup that takes, that is a car that you want to lose, use less ABS. So, uh, this braking was actually better for the purpose. And uh, although here it has less in-game braking pressure. So basically it can be like I'm braking, this, this amount of braking is the same as the max that is showing here. But I wasn't able to overuse the ABS and go to 100% brake pressure before while I was with the load cell. But lap times, again, even though that corner was a little bit quicker overall, it didn't make much difference. So, yeah, there is that. And with the GT3 car, which is a car that you want to use heavily the ABS, you basically want this braking shape. Like break as much as you can as quick as you can and release as quick as you can as much as you can so here like you can see although this w a car in white had better brakes uh, the braking distance could have been smaller if I could build up the brake pressure quicker and the release of the brakes although here was worse uh, here was slightly better I would say that the potentiometer pedal would be potentially quicker not by much I don't think it would add up to more than a tenth in a lap uh, by breaking with the with the uh, potential meter pedal, but it is something I think like theoretically it is lower to use a heavy uh, ABS based car with the load cell rather than a potential meter. And here, like comparing a stint, 
you can see that the load cell was more consistent. The faster outlap is because the pit box here was way behind uh, than this one. It was about one and a half seconds quicker with the load cell. So it showed that it was quicker to adapt to the load cell out of no uh, out of nothing, like not driving. And it was slightly more consistent, although there was traffic, so I don't think that's pretty much conclusive data. Uh, about raw speed, I think it was pretty much the same. Uh, maybe here there was traffic, and the first lap was very, very similar. So yeah, I don't think there is a huge difference on pace. However, when you go to iRacing, which likes to Inter to uh, simulate brakes differently than any other sim in the market today. Um, you start. I, I saw some lap time gains. Uh, I was quicker with it. And if you look at uh, like my uh, potential meter break, that's because I limited the uh, brake brake pressure in i racing by changing the controller in a way that I would never reach the values with the pedals I had. So I'm gonna link that in the description if you want to do that. I think that improves the performance a lot for people with potential meter breaks on iRacing. But analyzing like this, the, this was done like five laps of each car. Uh, this The setup of the BMW M8 was even quicker and it has less fuel, even though it was, I still was three tenths quicker with the load cell, even with the fuel disadvantage and setup disadvantage. Uh, with the Porsche Cup, same setup, same condition, same everything, and it was half a second quicker with the load cell, with the same amount of practice. So five laps. Uh, there you go, like you see the, the approach of the corner, I could carry more speed and still keep the car stable because of the brake release. And in uh, small brake pressure applications, I think it was a lot better and it is a lot easier subjectively like to do this uh, with the load cell. Look at the exit, how it is a lot better because of that. Um, and again, like look at how much later I can break here and th this braking shape is a lot better than it was. Look at the difference in apex speeds and approach speeds. So yeah, um, I think like there was a raw lap time gain in I racing. Although I don't think that lap time gain would keep this <laughs> as big if I spent more time practicing with the potentiometer pedal and with the load cell pedal. I think automatically there wouldn't be much of a difference over a single lap. Although I think that it was much more natural to break with the load cell in I racing, so I think I, I would be more consistent and therefore I would be quicker over a stint. Maybe not over a single lap, but over a stint, I think in iRacing, you can definitely benefit from a load cell. That being said, I think I can make some final considerations. So if you want first, if you want to practice for real life uh, motorsport, go for load cell, like the potential meter, the way it measures it, it's not like a brake pedal in a real car. So you are gonna break with less force. You can put a very, very strong spring, but again, it's gonna have ridiculous travel for a race car. Maybe not for a street car, but for a race car, for sure. So it is more realistic to have a load cell. Uh, it is easier to adapt to the load cells, and that's why I think it would be faster in iRacing over a stint. I don't think over a single lap that would make a significant difference. Maybe it will be easier to achieve that lap, but again, I can't say it's faster because I think and I have seen people that have gone just as quick. Uh, I even go just as quick depending on the car. If the car has less demanding brakes, uh, I think it is uh, the it is the same in i racing. In all other things, I don't think there is an advantage of using it in raw lap time. I think there is inconsistency because the brake pedal is more natural and, but that like, if you don't have much experience with real life cars and if you got used it to the potential meter, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference to you. Um, but yeah, the potential meters would require more practice because I was lower to get up to speed with the potential meter pedals in all cases. And that's one big difference that I noticed when I changed it to the load cell. Uh, the load cells require more maintenance. Why? Because you need to change the bushings, you need to lubricate your pedals because you have more organic parts, which is going to be rubber, which is going to be plastic. So yeah, the construction is more complex, so it requires more maintenance while the 
potentiometer pedals are relatively simple, so they can just be left there and they are just gonna work. Um, potentiometers are cheap, as I said, like buying a potentiometer is l way less than a dollar for each. Buying a load cell, you can't find a usable load cell for less than like $15 cost for the load cell. So that's why you see why load cell pedals are more expensive. And although potentiometers, they are excellent for throttle because throttle is a travel based measurement in any car. If it's drive by wire, it's if it is just pulling like the air inlet, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a travel based measurement and potentiometers are really good for that. So there is no reason to go for a load cell for a throttle unless you want like want it because of the the way it works electronically and if it is easier for you to put in your device mechanically. Although load cells they are excellent for brakes and hydraulic clutch, clutches. Um, so yeah, I already showed how it is a way better to measure the brake uh, force with the load cell. So yeah, there is no need to go much further on that. The potential meters are theoretically faster for ABS cars outside of iRacing because in iRacing we don't want to use ABS at all. Uh, but in load cells we require a weird pedal setting to match the potential meters potential. Uh, get it? So yeah, wasn't very funny. Uh, when running ABS, w what would that be? So you would need to remove all your bushings, you would need to remove all your rubber, it's not gonna feel like a brake pedal at all, but you are gonna be able to build your pressure really quick. So that will match the performance theoretically. But again, I don't think there is a huge advantage which would make me change to a potential meter pedal even in a hot lap competition. So I think I prefer to get uh, to keep using what I'm using to in uh, a competition like that. Even if that costs me theoretically, which I don't think I will achieve, less than a tenth of a second. So that was it. Uh, thank you for watching and leave in the comment section what you want to see next on sim racing uh, opinions.